Hey, it's Jess back with another Misfit Makers Besties tutorial and this week we are doing the car freshies. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. We upload twice a week, every Wednesday and Saturday, and that's the way to get notified. Also, check out our free Facebook group, Misfit Makers, and if you want to grow your business, check out our mentorship group, Misfit Makers Besties. Okay, so today we are making the car freshies, and I have so much to unpack. After putting this video together, I realized that I did not show you how to add your scents to your unscented beads, but I did put a small little clip together that is in the besties group. So I will also link that down below. And if you have any questions on how to do so, please ask in the comments below. But these uh, mason jars are from the Dollar Tree and I use eight to 10 ounce ounces of unscented beads to two ounces of scents. So very, very simple. You're gonna wanna shake your scents for about a week to two weeks. I always say like seven to 10 days and they should be fully mixed well. Make sure you're shaking them at least once or twice a day. I got my carts here from Michaels to keep all of my freshy supplies nice and organized. And but you can keep your freshy stuff organized or in whatever containers that you like. These are all the supplies that I will be using today and I will make sure to link everything down below. But here I'm just showing you all of the products that you will need to make freshies. Here is our Misfit Makers Mica Bundle from CCDIY. And here are two of my practice freshies that, hey, if I do, if I don't say so myself, they did turn out pretty good. All right. So again, we have a lot to unfold, a lot of information. So let's get started. So after your freshy, your unscented beads are ready, which you will know when they're ready because they will not stick to the sides of your jars anymore. So my freshy beads have been sitting for about 10 days. I've been shaking them once or twice a day and you can almost tell the difference because they're like white now. Um, like I said, you will be able to tell when they're when they're ready. My my mold here, my freshy mold is from Telebox. This is actually our custom mold, exclusive mold. So again, I will link this down below, but it says, come on besties, let's go party. Here I am filling my mold up about an eighth of an inch from the top. So not all the way full, but I'm just leaving a little space at the top. And what that does is I'm measuring out how many beads I will actually need. And now I'm pouring it in a Ziploc bag. Some people pour their micas right into their mason jar to change their colors, but then all of those beads will be that cover color. So I don't want, you know, I might make my next freshie with this scent. I might want it to be blue. So I think this is just easier. Next, I'm going to use my mica from, again, our Misfit Makers bundle from CCDIY. And I'm going to add just a little bit to our baggie. Do not add too much because if you do add too much, it will, the beads will cook funny. It's almost like they will not cook all the way through. So a little bit goes a long way, just enough to change the color. I'm going to shake this up really, really good. And now I'm going to pour my unscented beads. Well, my scented beads now. <laughs> I'm going to pour them into my freshy mold. What is in my bag? Okay, I am going to use about half of that. So I am not emptying my bag completely. I am only putting about half of the beads into my freshie mold. I'm going to make sure that I'm pressing these beads down into my freshie mold, especially if your mold has a lot of grooves and stuff. We want to make sure that we get those beads really in there. So I'm making sure it's even. I don't have a lot on one side uh, and just making sure that it looks okay. My little oven here I have, I got it from Walmart for $19.99. Now every oven is going to cook differently, okay? This little oven cooks very hot, very fast. So the recommended time that I would say to start with is 350 for four minutes to start out with. I did that and I burned the crud out of my first mold. So I actually turned my temp down to about 320 for four minutes to start out with and that was 
perfect. You will see a little bit of smoke. I'm trying to show you here. A little bit of smoke is okay. If it's like gushing smoke out of your oven, that is not okay. <laughs> Something is wrong. You're either burning your freshie or there's plastic in there, or you might have a default mold, which that can happen as well. Your mold itself should not be bubbling or burning or melting in any kind of way. So you can use your little tray to stick your mold on. Here, I'm just putting my mold directly on the rack. Be very careful when getting your mold out. I'm using a little silicone tool here. Everything is extremely hot including the mold. Now I did learn a little hack that I saw instead of using a silicone tool because this is kind of big, use the end of a nail. So like the, the circle nail head to just push those beads down. Sorry here, I'm trying to do this with one hand and record and you know, I'm, I'm struggling a little bit. <laughs> what I'm doing is I'm pulling my mold out of the oven. After pushing those beads down, I am now going to add the rest of our beads that were in our bag and continue cooking it all the way through. Now, again, everybody does this differently, guys. I've seen tutorials. I've talked to people where they just stick their mold in their oven at 350 for 15 minutes and it's perfect. I learned a lot from my friend Lindsay over at Tully Box because she makes a lot of molds and she said that she really likes doing it this way, kind of cooking it half and half, which makes sense. And she hasn't had any issues. So this is the way I'm going to do it. But you guys try, try it the other way and see if that works for you. Again, depending on your oven, the other way might work better than this way. Now, you can tell when your when your freshie is done because it will start like mountain peaking is what they call it. Like the sides of the beads will start peaking up and then you know it's done. So that might not be right at four minutes. That might be at three and a half. You can go ahead and pull it out or at four minutes, if you don't see that happening, then wait another few seconds. And then once you start seeing that peak, those mountain peaks, then you know it's ready. Freshies are not something you can walk away from guys. Do not put this in your oven and walk away, please be cautious because again, I actually had a mold that was a default mold and it started bubbling and that could have been really, really bad if I would have walked away from that. And plus, again, every oven's different. So just please be careful with this. You know, I don't want any accidents to happen. Just keep an eye on it. So you're going to want to let your freshie mold cool off completely. I let mine cool off for about an hour. Do not be impatient. Do not try to demold this warm. Um, just let it completely cool. After it cools, we are then going to take our scissors and trim up our edging all around our mold to just make it nice, nice and neat looking. So if you notice my mold's a different color here, because on the other side, on the, on the side that we're glittering, I had a little space that I must have not pushed my beads all the way down. So it was almost like a little hole. I probably could have still decorated it for myself, but if I was selling this for a customer or showing you guys, I, I would not. So I just remade it and I actually used a lighter pink mica. So after you demold your, your mold, you are ready to decorate. There's lots of different ways you can decorate this. You don't necessarily need to use glitter, but what you will need is a precision tip bottle. So right now I'm using a paintbrush and some Mod Podge and I'm doing a nice thin layer of Mod Podge because I wanted my entire freshy mold to be glittery. I previously did a couple that you saw at the beginning of my video where I did not glitter the entire front. I just used the precision tip bottle to glitter the letters and that was perfectly cute too. But I was like, hey, I want to try this. So this is what I did. After I get a nice smooth coat of Mod Podge on there, I'm going in with a very fine glitter. This is Sparkle Tastic from the Glitter Craze. You see me stopping. Look, I keep stopping and looking at it because I'm like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. This is so pretty. I, I'm obsessed, guys. <laughs> like, I'm going to be making freshies every single day. My house smells amazing. Some other ways that you can or some other things that you're going to need is, like I said, a precision tip bottle and you can fill it with acrylic paint or chalk paint. And then that way for those really small details, if you didn't want it glittered, you would just use your paint and a precision tip bottle for all of those details. Kind of like I'm doing here, only on, in this bottle, I have Mod Podge, I don't have acrylic paint. 
So now we're going to use our precision tip bottle, which you can find on Amazon, and we're going to do all of our fine details. So this really did not take that long after I was completely done. Try not, you're going to have loose glitter in sections where you don't want it. Do not try and brush it off because our Mod Podge is still wet and then you're going to end up messing up your your sections that you glittered. So just leave it sit. I let mine sit for about an hour just to make sure that my Mod Podge was fully dry. Then I went in with my dry brush and very carefully dried off all of that loose glitter where it was in sections that I didn't want. Now, some people, before they, if they're selling them, some people will take some clear spray sealer and just do a very thin coat of clear spray sealer to seal all of that loose glitter in. Um, again, I've seen people do it both ways. I've heard people do not do that. The one that I made for myself, I did not use clear spray sealer and my glitter is not going anywhere. But again, if it makes you feel more comfortable, especially maybe if you're shipping these, you can just take some clear spray sealer from Rust-Oleum and just do a nice thin coat on top. Now, these were, again, so much fun to make. I feel like I'm missing things. There's so much I want to say. We will be doing some lives over in Misfit Makers Besties, which is our mentorship group. So please come check out our group. We really go above and beyond to try to help each person individually over there. So if you are needing any help, check out our mentorship group group. Try it for a month. I promise you will love it. All of my unscented beads and my scents came from Stay Fresh with Peanuts. Again, I will link all of these down below, but I really, really loved the customer service there for one, and I really loved the scents. I went like overboard. I think I got like 20 different scents, so if you need help on what scents to buy, please comment down below because... I probably have just about all of them. <laughs> um, I will also link down below, like I said, a few mold companies, one of them being Telebox, where I got our custom Bessie mold along with many others. And yeah, check. make sure you check down below for any discount codes to these companies. One thing I will say, make sure you're using the right products for freshies. Do not use essential oils. Make sure you're getting the right scents that are made for freshies. Okay, next we're gonna go in with our small one inch small screw eye. All of the next few things that I will be showing you are on my Amazon supply list. I have an album that's labeled freshies. You can click it and grab all of these supplies. So we're gonna go in and we are just carefully going to screw this small screw eye into the top of our freshie mold. Be careful, go slow. It's a little tricky to kind of get it started, but once you get it started, easy peasy. Now we're gonna go in with our elastic string, and depending on where you're hanging this from is going to be the size, you know, the length of the string that you're going to need. I probably have about 12 inches here. Now watch carefully as I create this knot. I feel like trying to explain this to somebody is harder than just watching me. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm putting my two ends, my two ends of my string in one hand. So then I have just the loop in the other hand, right? And I'm creating that little loop around my finger. What I'm going to do next is take my lobster claw and I'm taking the C part of the lobster claw and threading our loop into the C part. Okay. And then you'll take your other end. So our two open ends of our string and just put them right into our loop. Voila. Just like that. Pull it tight. And then there we have it. So we have our lobster claw on the end. Now, again, my, I got a pack from Amazon where it comes in a variety of colors. Like I just grabbed pink because I thought that it matched nicely, but in this variety pack, they have silver, pink, gold, blue, pretty much every color that, that you want. Next, I'm going to grab my breakaway clasps. Again, these are on my Amazon supply list and they come in a variety of colors. So I'm going to find a female part and a male part to get those ready to put on our string. 
Now, my little gumball beads are from Telebox as well. I will link those down below. They come in this variety pack, and I will also link another company where you can purchase these little bubblegum beads, um, and I love and support both of these companies. So check them both out. So we are carefully going to trim up our the ends of our string again if you need like help doing this like if your string is fraying at all use a lighter and just light the end to kind of make it not like to stop fraying so it makes the end of your string hard and then you can easily just thread those beads onto your string i personally didn't have any troubles my elastic string was not fraying at all so i thought i was going to have trouble but the hole is deceiving i thought this hole was a lot smaller than what it was that's what he said <laughs> just kidding i'm just kidding <laughs> okay so now we are going to put our clasps on the end of our string so this is really simple we are going to start by putting the one clasp on it doesn't matter what side you start with male or female and you are going to put your string in the smaller hole okay once it's on there then we're going to tie about three or four knots and then trim up the extra string that you have and then voila that's it you're going to do this to both sides and that, that you're done the two pieces will clasp together the final step is using our lobster claw to attach it onto our screw eye and then you can hang it wherever i am going to put this in my car but my daughter made one for herself and she has it hanging in her locker you can have it at your desk in your bedroom house freshies car freshies school freshies wherever you'd like you will see that i am taking off my old freshie and putting on my new freshie be careful if you are putting it in your car that you don't have it leaning against any plastic in your car that it, it's not touching it because the oils from the freshies if they are leaning against something for too long they can leak out so just be mindful where your freshie sits in your car but voila i am obsessed with these i cannot wait to see everybody's freshies i had so much fun and they turn out so cute i hope this tutorial helps and again if it does make sure you leave your comments down below and we'll see you guys later bye guys